Hey Sammy, how's it going? All good, Tare. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Yeah. So, shall we talk? Shall we introduce the topic? Yes. Get right into it. Let's let's do it. Uh, it's been a, it's been a, a while uh, for for this episode. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, big time. Today's topic is about time. So, uh, what is time? We're going to look at uh, time in the psychological and time in the scientific and physical. Yeah. We want to expand upon that. What, how do we perceive time? I think time perception is a big thing and it changes as we, you know, grow grow up in life, you know, from our childhood to our adulthood. Yeah. Uh, so I think we can, we can, we should start there uh, around time perception. And then we get into slowly, maybe the more physical and scientific around defining time, what it is and the implications on what the, the new physics law on, on time is. Yeah. So do you feel like when you were a kid, time used to go by slower or faster? Would you feel like a day goes slowly? When you're younger? Like no, when I, you were a kid, if you think back to mm, when you were a kid, was mm, time faster or slower? Actually slower in a sense. Slower? Yeah. Okay. And, and I think the reason is that when you're, when you're younger, you have more experiences. You're, you're dealing with a new world. You're dealing with, you know, fresh experiences and therefore, you know, you experience more and you're seeking to, to, to learn new things. Yeah. So you feel time is longer. Yeah. When I think back to when I was a kid, I mean, you only remember, especially when you're really young, you remember more pictures and frames rather mm. than really vivid memories. And I don't know if there are, there are probably people out there who have really vivid memories of things that happened when they were mm. children. And I'm sure, I know that there are things as well that I remember, but the, the part that's really interesting is that definitely time was moving slower in a sense where one day feels like a longer period of time mm. than it does now. And that ties into what you just mentioned, but also when you're a kid, you have less memories and your memories go back a fewer, fewer number of years, right? So mm -hmm. when you're 10 years old, you only have like four or five years of core memories yeah. uh, because initially you don't really remember much in your first couple of years of life. And then when you become 20, now you have 15, 16, whatever mm -hmm. it is, years of memory. So because there's all that experience in a relative sense, if you think about how much time you have left, the, the relationship between them just gets, sh so one day relatively to mm -hmm. you is shorter. The closer you approach, you know, the, the end of your time, which would be yeah. your death basically. Mm. So because of On that- average, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so because of that one day seems like less time, the mm. older you get. You know, you're, you're approaching your end. There's much more in your memory. Starts becoming 20 years, mm. 30 years, 40 years of memories, the older you get, which relatively mm. one day becomes a lot less time for you because you've already lived 40 years or 50 years. Yeah. So it is, it's, I mean, it's definitely clear that memory plays a big role in, in how we look back on, on our time. And just to add to, to that a little bit, the, so there's kind of two theories why we see time when we're younger as uh, el more elongated or stretched out. Number one is because, as you were saying, the relative aspect, right? Is that just because of how much you've existed at, as a child, your, your time is a bigger portion of your life. Exactly. Right? So that, that's, one, that's one angle. The other angle is that when we talked a little bit about this, when, for example, novelty, we have a novelty bias. The more new things you do, the more your brain has to exert effort to uh, process that. And the more it, it takes to process, the more it's going to feel like time is longer. And when, and you, as you get older, your brain optimizes, number one, it, it processes your, your memories and your experiences faster. And you tend to have lesser or newer memories. You have fewer newer memories. And, and you tend to do the same things uh, as you get older, post 30 and 40, you're not really doing too much, too, uh, too, too much new things. And, and therefore you feel like, okay, that, the day passed or the year passed much faster. 
Um, and, and that's why they recommend, for example, that if you want to feel like your days are longer, number one is do new things. Do, find something you haven't done and, and you'll see how you feel. And Always I, keep the novelty alive. The novelty, yeah. Try and keep it there. So that there's... Um, so there's invest in yourself. Try to put yourself out of your comfort zone, so to speak, mm. so that you learn new things, which mm. makes your brain work harder, which makes you perceive time slower yeah i guess and it's perception right and and we're, we're gonna juggle this it's all around it's definitely psych- perception yeah the psychological perception is in contrast to what we'll reach around sort of yeah. the physical law and yeah, yeah i mean if i think realm. back to when i was a kid even during school days mm. i remember always distinctly knowing what date it is the year when my really? birthday is coming up okay all that stuff is always in my head and i'm super excited about you mm. know the next year it was 1995 next year is 1996 mm. wow mm. kind of thing and it's always it's always ingrained in my head time day after day mm. now you know i'm in my mid 30s mm. I don't, sometimes I don't even know what year it is. I'm like, wait, 2023 <laughs> or 2022? You know what I mean? Okay, okay. And this is just a function of how, how much faster time is going. Like mm. it, it stops, it stops meaning as much as it used to mm. when I was a kid. And it just mm. goes by faster naturally. And I think that's more, more of the time bank aspect of how much time you've lived relatively. Mm. But yeah, on, on a macro scale, I guess it would be the time bank the mm. memories that you have, but on the micro scale, it'll be the novelty. Yeah. Right. So if you think about the moment to moment, how in an, in, how, how in a given day, can you make time move slower? Just make sure you're learning new things and you're kind of stretching yourself and mm. challenging yourself to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's like the case, for example, when p- people look back on vacations a lot. And again, this is where memory comes in is that when you, when you think about time, in a way, when your mind is looking back on memories, the time of or the duration in this sense doesn't really affect as much as much as you, what you're doing. Yeah, that's true. So you know, it's kind of contrary to what we might think that you know, a two week vacation, is it double a one week vacation? Well, in some cases it's not. And, and maybe we can make it cover that on a topic around memory and how memory works and, and the mind's way of perceiving memory and experiences. But this was a point raised by Daniel Kahneman in, in one of his uh, TED Talks. We talk, he speaks about this. So it, it, it's, it's there. So that there's that aspect of memory that is, uh, really affects how we perceive time. Yeah. yeah. What about from moment to moment? Because mm. I know for a fact that if I'm sitting in a waiting room mm. For someone to call my name, like if I'm in a waiting room for a dentist's appointment and I'm sitting there Mm -hmm. twiddling my thumbs, time passes so slowly. If I'm on a plane, I'm on a plane and it's a long flight to the US from Dubai and I'm not, like I watch the movie and I'm starting to get bored and agitated Mm. and I keep looking at the clock that clock just does not go forward. It doesn't, yeah. It just, it feels like time almost freezes. Mm. And conversely, if I'm doing something that I really love, you know, I'm in a flow state, working on working on music mm. or whatever it is that I'm really, really enjoying, suddenly multiple, or I'm with someone that I really enjoy talking to, multiple hours have passed, mm. And I just didn't feel it. You like you look it. at the time, it's 1 p.m. Then you look again, it's suddenly 4 p.m. And you're like, where did the, where did all the time go? Yeah. yeah what that, is, what is that? I mean, I mean, it touches and you said it, it's the flow state, right? And maybe this is, it can be even a segment on its own and because it, it differs by what you're doing. And like one example, you know, that comes to mind, uh, you know, from what, what I've seen, a, a, a busy, a busy day is the best thing for you. But a boring day, or, or what is a boring day, is a day that you don't have meetings. It's the worst day you can ever have. When you don't have meetings, the day is slow. It doesn't The minute you have three to four meetings, even if it's not a stacked schedule, you go like, okay, the day passed by fast. And I want to ask you about this. There's a quote that kind of touches on this. So a scientist, a well-known scientist, actually had this quote, and it was very interesting. If you sit with a pretty girl for one hour, it feels like a minute. 
But watch a stove for one minute, it feels like an hour. That's relativity. Do you know who said that? Relati- it would be Albert Einstein? Yeah. 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 So he quipped on it. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, sitting on a stove is very painful. He, I'm assuming it's like a hot stove. Yeah. But that's the thing. It's, it's the same with, you know, putting something in the microwave, right? Is when you, when you watch time, and this is back to your point on, on the plane ride. Yeah. When you watch time, it's passing by very slow. Very, very slowly. Yeah. It's like the saying, a watched pot never boils. Never, yeah. yeah. So yeah. when you're sitting there and you're trying to boil some water in a pot, it just never mm. gets there just because you're waiting for it. And yeah. every second becomes agonizingly slow because mm. you just want the damn pot to boil so you could start cooking whatever mm. it is you're cooking. Yeah. But it just never does. And the moment you distract yourself mm. and then look back at it, suddenly it's boiling, which yeah. is, it's something that's, it's hard to intuit, right? Like you can't really think about why something like that happens. Like mm. what, what is a, <clears throat> the perception of time in your brain? Because a second is technically a second. You know, it's not passing faster or slower, but to you, things can really deviate wildly from moment to moment in terms of how you're experiencing this second. Mm. So it's, it's a concept that's not easy to grapple with, but... Not at all. It, it hits so many things because it's the, the psychological, it's philosophical, time means so many things. It does. Uh, like it does. The, the Greeks, for example, had two definitions of time. They had the, what we were kind of talking about, the qualitative time, the yeah. time that, you know, time setting, looking at time, the hours, which they called chronos. And they had a qualitative aspect of time. They called kairos, which is more about, you know, the, the right moment or the opportune moment in uh, Jack Sparrow in parts of the Caribbean. Okay. He, he, he so striking at the right moment or... Yeah. When is it the right time to do something? You know, like, oh, it's, it's about time for me to do this. It's, uh, it's about time for you to pursue that. Uh, qualitative versus quantitative. And, and we've, I think the way the world is now is that we've become so accustomed to a very strict quantitative time, yeah. right? The setting of time is in a sense, a social construct, right? Yeah. That's, that's how we arrived to where we are today is that we started to set time. Yeah, there is no like universal rule, Yeah. right? Mm. We, we kind of decided that we want time to be this, mm. like one hour is one hour mm. of a day that's based on the rotation of the earth around itself. We kind of, we kind of built that up. It's not something mm. that's, you know, yeah, f- yeah. fundamental. Mm. Time itself, like time's movement, possibly fundamental, and Mm. we can talk about that later. But the way that we use time, definitely not fundamental. Mm. All the time zones that we have, we Mm. we made them. And then if you look at the lines, if you look at how the time zones are drawn on the globe, arbitrary. Sometimes they just go a bit to the, they're not just straight lines. They go a bit to the right, a bit to Mm. the left, just to make things more convenient for the people that are living in that area. And time zones, basically their function is that you're keeping day and night approximately at the same schedule for all countries around the world. Like if you think of 3 p.m., if you're close to the equator, not North or South Pole, uh, South Pole, and you think of 3 p.m., you're going to think of the afternoon, Mm -hmm. right? That's because of time zones. But in reality... It's going to be afternoon for you, but it's going to be midnight for someone in the U.S., for example. Yeah. yeah. So it's definitely a construct. Humans, humans decided what to do with time, and the Western world specifically decided on how to do timekeeping in a mm. sense where it's more universal. It's more understood universally and there's a very concrete hour minute second to do things because like in african <clears throat> customs even to to this day time being kept to the second doesn't really mean much to them they say like for example let's meet up this afternoon mm. rather than let's meet at 5 p.m and then the afternoon could be anything it yeah. could stretch a span of two hours and then they mm. meet and then it's a lot more emphasis on the social and communication aspect than it is on the timekeeping aspect that the Western world, and mm. it's now starting to become international, 
but that started yeah. with the Western world. Mm. So yeah, an interesting thing is to think about like the Greenwich Meridian, Meridian time and how that started. Mm. So do you, can you speak more to that? Uh, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing, the, what we, the result of what we have now is essentially setting time standards due to a confusion of train times. Train times? Yeah, bet between cities. I think this, this was between the UK, United States and Canada as well, is that they, because people would, would needed to, to have accurate timings for when trains were arriving and to monitor their schedules. So that setting of the time enabled the creation of the Greenwich Mean Time, uh, and it was you know that that's that's what drove it uh, essentially, so that we can we can have accuracy in when you know we board trains and and move around the world, um, keeping the train schedule. Yeah, yeah, it's very helpful to have one, especially if we're thinking about today, to have one universal standard of time, and GMT is also called UTC. Universal, universal time, I don't know what C means, mm. but a lot of like software and stuff now, mm. because there's syncing between softwares that are in different time zones, you need to kind of define a standard time zone mm. where everything is built around databases, cloud, mm. cloud functions. Yeah, they're just the basis Communicate of, yeah. across. And that time standard is UTC. Mm. It's, it's the time standard, which is the GMT time. It just makes things a lot easier to synchronize that you have a, a universal time mm. construct that you're following. But in the end, it, we, just, we just made this up, yeah. right? We defined it ourselves. But how, how did we define it initially? How is, why is one year one year? Well, the, the year, I mean, from, that is based on purely, you know, like physical law is around the, the Earth's, you know, circulation of, of the sun. And, and, and in terms of, so like the year, month and day have actual, you know, physical basis right. or, or, you know, based on scientific law. Yeah. When we further divided time into the hours, this is where it's, I get, this is where it's the social construct. And, and I think we talked about how, you know, the body naturally deviates to instead of a 24 hour, 25 hour cycle. Yeah. Is the it? circadian rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. So. If we think about the Earth's rotation around mm. itself, mm. that's 24 hours, right? Okay. So it takes 24 hours to go from sunrise to sunrise, technically. For us as humans, our biological cl clocks kind of adapt to that today because you have to wake up and go to work technically at mm. 8 a.m. So you need to adapt to that 24 hour clock. Mm -hmm. But to study the circadian rhythm and what the core circadian function is for human beings, mm. there was an experiment that was done where they just put a bunch of people in bunkers. Okay. And those bunkers had no windows or anything for the people inside to understand whether it's daytime or nighttime. Okay, yeah, yeah to block out sunlight. And based on that, yeah. they wanted to see what humans, how humans naturally start their sleep patterns, start their day. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is their biological clock? How's it formed? Yep. And the results were that on average, the biological clock is 25 hours Okay. on average, which means that it's a bit longer than the earth day, mm -hmm. which is weird because we try to adapt to the earth day all the time. Like, we adapt to the 24 hour thing, but then mm. if we're left to our own devices, it becomes 25 hours, mm. which means like 25 hours would mean you sleep for 10 hours, you're awake for 15 hours, or you sleep for mm. nine, you're awake for 16. Maybe we should try that. Right? Maybe that's actually better for yeah. us. As if this is what all else, you know, if we take all factors out of the equation, mm. if our body just kind of rewires itself to work on a 25 hour mm. clock, it's doing that for a physiological reason. Yeah, something we don't understand. Yeah, I, I think yet. I think this is. It's actually to that point that they they don't know quite why. Why do we deviate to that? And there's a there's a school of thought that you know there's there's wisdom in your own body, the system itself. So it must it has something. It knows something that we don't know yet. For sure. So right, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely things that like if you think about all the functions that the body does mm. that we don't actively control. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Without breathing, you're going to die. But you never really think about or learn how to breathe. Yeah. 
But that's probably something similar to the circadian rhythm or the biological clock that's inside mm -hmm. you that isn't really aligned with the 24-hour day that we've defined mm -hmm. based on the, rota the rotation of Earth around its own axis, mm -hmm. sunrise to sunset. So uh, it, it's interesting that even the, the terminology circadian or the origin of the word uh, literally translates from Latin to circa dia, so about a day. So even, you know, the Romans at the time, you know, by setting it, they kind of knew that it's, you know, it's not exactly, uh, you know, one day they just said about. You think they knew? You, you think it's There's circadian always... because uh, they knew it's not really a day? I don't know. I, I like to be on the side that, you know, the, the ancients were wise. They were wiser than we I'm were. I'm pretty sure they're, they're, yeah, they were definitely wise. Yeah. Uh, so that, so there's that. Uh, one, one aspect that we can maybe drop and, and touch upon later, uh, possibly this is, it, it's more central around sleep, but the, the active or our internal clock, uh, there's a term for it. It's called, it's abbreviated by SCN. Okay. And it's it's a bit of a you know it's a big word supra supra uh, superchiasmatic nucleus SCN. And this is basically our internal clock. So and that's the circadian rhythm. So and and it's yeah it's it's function is to uh, you know decide and set our uh, you know biological and, and neurological processes uh, around that internal clock. And it it plays a big role in in sleep for example. So this is something that we can probably you know like deep dive um you know at some point. Yeah, um, it's an interesting one, and it's something that I'm looking to you know expand on uh, and and just understand a bit more. Yeah, so the way our body understands time, I guess, would be mm. would be based on what it thinks is an optimal sleep wake cycle, mm. right? That's the way our body biologically would optimize for mm. its own time. But then when you bring daylight into the equation, we start wiring ourselves to optimize our sleep schedule based on when there's daylight and when it when there's no mm. sun. Yeah, so I guess that's that makes it a bit different, the biological clock versus what the physical clock actually is, and then we adapt mm. ourselves to that. But there's always one background thing that's really determining all of this, and it's the concept of time itself. Yeah. Like there's there's time. And time is like moving forward, always mm. moving forward. You can't, you can't pause time, mm. right? It's just going to keep going. And we've built our whole society around our understanding of time as being this non-changing, uniform, steadily yeah, the, marching forward kind of concept. Of time, yeah. And when you think about it, like initially... I guess early humans, I, I, I wouldn't know to go back how far in terms of like how humans 50,000 years ago kept time, but I'm guessing it's like sunset, sunrise, and they probably mm. would have, the location of the sun and the sky would have marked like certain elements of mm. what time in the day it is, and then the seasons and things like that. And then if you extend it to the Gregorian calendar, the thinking was that one year is one re rotation of the earth around the sun. Mm -hmm. One month is approximately the time it takes from one new moon to the other. And this is more relevant in the Islamic calendar where you strictly look at the new moon yeah. to determine the, the time. And then you break down into a day, which is the rotation of the earth around itself, sunrise to sunrise. And then from there, it was broken down into hours, minutes, and seconds based completely on like a social construct, yeah. right? Like a second wasn't defined by a physical process back then. So the, the question is like, how accurate is that? Like to us, we, mm. think, we think of time as just not being different in any way, or, or it could never be different because the way you feel a second is all, it's always gonna pass by as a second for you. Okay. One second per second. It doesn't change, yeah your fundamental understanding of a second is never changing. Mm. So if we talk about like the physical aspect of it and the Newtonian physics, particularly from Isaac Newton, okay. time is uh, fundamental, it's non-changing, it's a, it's a universal constant. Okay, so we've kind of, yeah, we've, we've talked about a little bit the perception early, yeah. early on, you know, how we can see it, how it's 
how we perceive time psychologically. Which we perceive it as not being constant, right? Like it's, not, it's elastic. Right? It is. And, and, it's and, elastic. Yeah. Like the way we 100%. think about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. It, it but goes back to the example of waiting for your meal to finish heating up in the microwave mm. versus you talking to a girl you're attracted to or a close friend of yours yeah. and you're having a lot of fun. And time passes by slowly. Yeah, and that's the thing. This is what's nice is that and maybe we, we can touch on this um, briefly before jumping into sort of the more, you know, physical and scientific aspect. In terms of perception, because of the psychological, we can say it's elastic. The the physical scientific is, is fixed. So we, and the fact that it's psychological, it relies on our cognitive processes, that's, it's an illusion. Because we know that we, we take shortcuts, right? We know that our minds uh, have templates that they rely on when we're perceiving time. Yeah. And, and among other things. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But time is, is a mm. huge core aspect and our brains are wired to understand time mm. based on how we function as human beings yeah. and where we're born. Yeah. Right. And ultimately the perception of time being <clears> elastic <throat> depends on, I guess, how engaged your brain is and what you're doing from period yeah. to period. And the perception of time at a macro scale becomes very different from a perception of a time at a micro scale. Okay, and this is where you wanted to dive into a bit of the Newtonian and, and the physics of, of this. So yeah, how, yeah. So, so how if, does this work? Yeah, if you think yeah. about it, this is going to get pretty confusing. Mm. I still get confused about it because it's not the intuitive <clears throat> way to think of time. Yeah. But the Newtonian time is is constant where uh, where it doesn't change no matter what's happening around you. Okay. But then Einstein came and the theory of relativity came about. And what was discovered is time is relative. Time is not a constant. It's not absolute. Okay. And what that means is to give you an example, if I get on a rocket ship mm -hmm. and that rocket ship accelerates to half the speed of light. Okay, and is this outside of Earth? So yeah, let's say we go out of okay. Earth. Okay, so or we rotate around Earth. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. Let's say we go out of Earth, half the speed of light. I have a clock with me and I'm keeping time and I'm walking around the spaceship that's moving at half the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Everything's going normally. To me, one second is one second. Okay. Nothing's changing. Let's say 20 years pass and I'm on that rocket. Okay. I'm coming back to Earth now. I come back to Earth. Intuitively, the rocket lands, I come out of the rocket, 20 years have passed, I expect to see, let's say I'm coming to see you. Okay. I expect you to be around 50 okay. years old. 20 years, right? I've been in the rocket for 20 years, I've been keeping time, I've had a clock okay. with me, I know what year it is. But I see you and you're much older, you're in your 80s. Okay. And I'm like, what the heck just happened? Because I'm 50, yeah. but now you're 80. So I kind of traveled forward in time by doing this. So the, and this is, this is physically how it functions. This is the reality of time. Okay. So time is not absolute. Time is relative and it depends on how fast you're going. Okay. Because I was moving at half the speed of light, okay. time for me was actually moving slower All right. than it is for you on mm. earth. It was moving faster. So you aged faster than I did, but your perception of each second was still the same as my perception of each second. Okay. And this is where it's very, very confusing. And, and this is the, the primary sort of like, you know, like kick and takeaway from Interstellar, right? This is how they portrayed it. Yeah, they, they, they did. And yeah, this is so consistent with, with it's this consistent theory. with the science. Okay. It's consistent with the science of it. The Oops. only part that isn't consistent is the going back in time aspect, okay. but we can, we can, yeah. we can get to we'll that get into in a bit. A little bit. Yeah. No, what, what, yeah, what can happen for yeah, example? Yeah. Yeah. But, but, Okay, so re relative, yeah, relative wise, so you, you, you're coming back and you expect to see me at the same age as you and you come back and you see me with children and grandchildren. Yeah, and you're like 80, okay, okay. you know? So what is the truth? Mm. How many years have passed? Mm. Were they 20 years? Okay. Or were they 50 years? For you, they were 50. Yeah. For me, they were 20. Okay. But we both experienced the second being the same length. Mm. And this is where things start to break down in terms mm. of an understanding of, of how time works because it's very unintuitive. Like you can't think of, it just, our brains aren't wired to understand time in a relative 
way. Mm. And that could be because of biologically how we're born and our circadian rhythms, which we talked about being yeah. like based on a universal standard of time. But it also could be a little bit because of how we've grown up and how we understand time as being very strict and very constant. Okay. But the true nature of time is a lot more complex and hard to understand. Mm. Because if you think about it, it's not easy to comprehend that time is relative. So there could be two versions of the truth. The truth for me is different than the truth for you. It's because mm. we're experiencing time differently, mm. even though to us, it's the exact same second. Yeah, so second, uh, one second per second. Okay. That's, how, that's how fast time is going. Yeah. It's not like things, I'm on the spaceship, I age less than you. It's not like things suddenly slow down or I'm like, Argh. that's not mm. happening. Everything's still going the same way. Okay. So here's where, here's where it creates a bit of a conflict with the way that we used to measure time which is based on the Earth's rotation around its own axis. Okay. In the 1960s, scientists found that it's inaccurate. And I think that if you ask most people like what a day is, what, what, what is 24 hours, they're gonna tell you the time it takes Earth to yeah. rotate around, which isn't incorrect. Mm. It's not accurate, but it's not incorrect. And the reason that it isn't accurate is because gravity also plays a role in how fast time goes. Okay. So it's not just your speed, but it's also the gravity. Mm. So where you are on, on, on Earth. Where you are on Earth yeah, affects yeah, yeah. how much the gravity is impacting you. Mm. The higher you go up, the, the less gravity actually impacts you. The closer mm. you are to the center of the Earth, the more gravity impacts you. And, and therefore, if you're closer, you, it, time passes slower. Yeah. Okay. So the person who is at the top of Mount Everest versus mm. a person who is by the sea, yeah. The person by the sea, time passes slower for them. So they age less quickly mm. than the person okay. at the top of Mount Everest. And, and these differences, I mean, even for a, for a lifetime, they're, they're not that significant. They're minute. Yeah. Okay. They're minute. Okay. So it's 10, the difference is 10 nanoseconds every one kilometer you go above Earth in terms of like the gravity. Okay. So if you look at the core of the Earth, the difference between the age of the core of the earth to the age of the crust and the crust is the outer layer of the earth. Yeah. It's a 2.5 year difference since the beginning of the earth. And the earth has been around for 4.8 4, yeah. billion years or 4.3 billion years. I can't remember now exactly, but four, four point something. So in 4 billion years, the average age difference between the core and the crust is only two and a half years. So that's like a fraction of a percent. So really, in, if, you, if you condense that into the lifetime of a human, it's going to be maybe a second yeah. or something. So the difference isn't that much, but there's still a difference between the person living on the mountain mm. and the person living by the sea. There's still a difference. So the way we were keeping time as the rotation of the earth around itself is not accurate because it would be the same for me living at sea level and someone in Nepal living in the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's not actually the same, it's different. So we needed a way as humans to measure time that is accurate. We, we need okay. to measure time in a, in, in a relative way, not in an absolute way, because mm -hmm. now we know that time is relative and it's not absolute. So how the did, way we how measure- How we go about that? Yeah, yeah. The standard time now is one second. So we measure one second. And how we mm. measure one second is through the transfer of energy states of an atom of cesium. Cesium is an element, one of the fundamental elements on the periodic table. And it's cesium-133 to be, to be exact. And it's the transfer of energy states from that, at, that element from one uh, state to another. And it takes 9 billion microwave, a frequency of 9 billion of microwaves to transfer that cesium atom from one state to another. And atomic clocks basically do that. So they measure 9 billion oscillations mm. of microwaves to transfer the cesium state from one energy state to another. And that's defined as one second. That's and it's insane. not 9 billion, it's 9.1 something billion. Os uh, like that's the frequency mm. of the microwaves. And that's how we keep a second. So with this atomic clock, now we have an accurate perception of time. Okay. In a sense where we know how to keep it. 
let's say I put the clock with me on that spaceship that I took mm. and you have the same atomic clock with you on earth. <clears throat> I come back, my clock is 7 p.m. 20 years later, so it'll be 2043. Your clock is 7 p.m. 2063. And, and the time difference like is okay. not exact. It depends on how fast you're going, basically. But my clock and your clock are different. Okay. So that's, that's kind of how they prove the relativity of time. They have these atomic clocks now and they've done experiments and they know that on the mountain, the clock is running slower. Uh, sorry, mm. the clock is running, Faster. yeah, slower. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's still confusing to think about. Like, I still think like <coughs> slower, faster, faster, That's slower. the thing. It's a lot to, because you, I'm, I'm sure we can always like, you get mixed up with, is this one faster? Is this one slower? So you're saying near the core of the earth is your, the time is slower. Yeah, you age slower. You age slower. Okay, you so age time slower. passes faster. Yeah, the, the higher you are yeah. on Everest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, sorry. Faster <clears throat> with less gravity. Yeah. Slower with more gravity. And this is basically where we're at with, with, mm. the, with the physics of time. And so where do they want to go with this is the question. Is that, okay, how does this, you know, trickle on and, and help us, you know, solve other problems that we have around, you know, the time perception and relativity? So, so now if we do that rocket, I think we're, we're good. We're able to sort of, you know, we can compare the two clocks after some time. Yeah. Right. Uh, some time has passed. Yeah. But uh, b beyond that, what, what are their thoughts on, you know, like how can this help us understand more around the, you know, the physical world? So where it all breaks down is at the speed of light mm -hmm. or at infinite gravity, which we consider okay. like a black hole. Okay. Time... Is it about like time travel as well? So that it has knock-on effects, right? And time stops. Okay. Ah. At the speed of light, time stops. All right. So. So the clock, it won't. It... If you okay. so you can't have anything that's matter or physical or anything. Everything disintegrates at the speed <clears throat> of light to become okay. like photons, energy, okay. particles. Nothing can stay in matter state. Okay. But if, assuming. that we can keep an atomic clock moving at the speed of light, okay. it won't tick. It won't. Okay. Does it have any knock-on effects or any, you know, uh, connection to time travel somehow? It does uh. time travel to the future. To the future. Yeah. So okay. the, way, the way that I time travel to the future is I got on a spaceship, moved at half the speed of light, came mm. back to Earth, got off the spaceship, suddenly... The earth is in 20, year 2080, mm. but to me, it's still year 2040, for example. Okay, okay. So That's, you can always move, you can only move forward. You're basically. moving forward. Okay. But no matter how, what direction you're going in, you're always moving forward. So there's no way for you to kind of like reverse the mm. clock. So you can't go to the past. So you get time travel to the past doesn't work. Time travel to the in, past. Based on this theory, based right? on Based on how, of how the physics works yeah. of it. Time travel to the past, yeah, it like we we don't understand. There is no way to kind of mm. go to the past because where things break down completely is at the speed of light. So time's going slower and slower and slower and slower till you reach the speed of light where it becomes zero. Mm. Time becomes zero. You hit the speed of light. There's infinite gravity as well where time also okay. breaks down, and. You can't, you can't go before that. Like there is, the, you can't start getting into the negative where you're moving backwards. Okay. And, and you can't inverse that relationship. As you're saying, the time is going slower. How can you make... You yeah, can't. You can't flip it. No, you can't. Okay, well, so far. <laughs> yeah. Well, well okay. you can't go backwards in time. Time yeah. is, there's a direction, there's a directional arrow of time. And the physical, like one of the physical concepts that works with a direction of time is the concept of entropy. Mm -hmm. And entropy is basically how much randomness there is in a system. To make it as simple as possible, mm. we our universe tends towards maximum entropy. So okay. to maximize randomness, for okay. everything to be in the most random state possible. Okay. But maximum entropy. disorder, chaos. Exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's where we're tending to. And time needs to move in one direction. for the universe to end up in a state of maximum randomness. And everything we see and everything that occurs really supports this theory of entropy. 
okay. you think about a very a closed system, okay. Let's say I have this glass over here, and but it's it's there's like a piece of glass that's in the middle that's cutting it in half. So there's a piece of glass in the middle that's separating it in half. I fill half of the glass with coffee and the other half of the glass with milk. And I look at the glass. The glass is now half coffee and half milk. I take the glass out, that glass that's separating oh, the, the, okay. two, the two sides. Yeah. I pull it out. Now the coffee and the milk start to mix. Mm -hmm. What do you see initially in the glass? You're going to see the cloud of milk start to merge and meld with the coffee yeah. until it reaches a state of stability. And that state of stability is a state of maximum randomness where the one molecule of milk can be anywhere and one coffee, molecule of coffee could be anywhere in the glass. There is no way for it to re-separate. Yeah, okay. When it's for completely separate, yeah. entropy is high. Randomness is low because it's ordered. There's milk, there's coffee. When they're all mixed up and jumbled, high entropy. In a closed system, mm. there's always a direction and a flow towards maximum entropy. Mm. And that is how we kind of understand time as well, yeah. where time moves forward because there's a tendency towards maximum entropy. So that kind of defines like the arrow of time to us. Okay. And there's no way for this coffee to separate itself. And go back. Which, and, yeah. which means like going back in time is weird. Like if you grab like a vase, you know, filled with water and you just drop it on the floor, it's going to shatter and the water is going to spread. And there's no way for the vase to just jump back on the mm. table and fix itself. Yeah. We're going forward. So going backward in time breaks that kind of trend towards maximum entropy yeah. of the universe. That's one thing it breaks. That's one of the theory, yeah. But there, there's another uh, around, you know, that uh, a logical sort of. Uh, yeah, paradox. there are logical logical paradoxes towards time travel. Yeah. Is so, it the, the grandfather paradox? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you go back in time and you kill your grandfather, yeah. How are you? How are you there? Mm. Yeah, you can't do that, because you've you've just eliminated yourself from existing. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you go back in time and you kill your grandfather when your grandfather is a baby. Mm and you still exist, you've created a paradox. Mm. Also, or if there's a different theory, that there's an alternative timeline that is created. Somehow. Yeah, yeah. So right? that means like a new universe is born. Mm. And in that universe, your granddad didn't exist and you came from a different universe. Mm. Right? Because you still exist in that universe mm. where you killed your yeah. granddad. But yeah. where do you come from? Exactly. A different universe. So... Yeah, that's where it gets fuzzy. And it gets fuzzy because to travel back in time, you're technically traveling to a different universe if yeah. you want to accept the fact that it's possible. Yeah. Okay, but so then you're there's a... so many yeah, assumptions with that. Yeah. But then there's another thing. Mm. Where are all the time travelers if it exists? Mm. We can go infinitely into the future. Mm. If there's an instance of one time traveler coming back, we're going to know about it. Yeah. Even if you're mm. thinking it's like a million years later, they come back to the year 2023 or the year 1980 or whenever. Mm. Wouldn't it have happened yeah, if right. time travel to the past w exists? Mm. They would know about it. They would. It would have yeah. happened. There would be evidence of it somehow. <clears throat> and all these sort of, again, some are, are movies, obviously, but there's this idea that, you know, people have come back to warn you of impending doom, right? Yeah. So if, if that was any by any shot possible... It, it might have happened. and Exactly. Uh, if we are tending to Or bringing, entropy, bringing back certain technology or certain knowledge or certain ideas, yeah. wouldn't that be... Yeah. Like if in, if, in, if in 200 years or in 500 years, we solve the aging problem mm. and then we kind of figure out the fountain of youth and how to become immortal, how to immortalize ourselves as mm. humans, wouldn't you want to come back and... Give it to pe people that you care. Yeah. Give it to Maybe. Albert Einstein yeah. or give it to, you know, someone, Nik Nikola Tesla, yeah. Nikola or Nikola, one of them. Yeah. Would, wouldn't you want to give Stephen Hawking mm. uh, the immor immortality juice? <laughs> so Maybe, yeah. if you reach that point and then you understand how to travel back in time, mm. it just becomes one of the empirical problems where we haven't seen it happen. Therefore... It probably can't exist. To prove it, to prove it scientifically, is very, very difficult. Mm. Like it's not easy to prove that you can't go back in time from a from a physics aspect. 
Okay. But yeah, it's, it's it's quite deep, man. I'll be honest. Like a lot of this, it's it's not easy on the mind, as we were saying. Is that we're not we're not wired to get grasp this intuitively, and and I think as you were saying that this is a very recent sort of development in terms of the time aspect as uh, relative versus absolute, right? So it's a very recent development. Yeah, yeah. it's in the past sixty or so years. Yeah. But it's a strange concept because mm. our brains aren't wired to understand it that way. Our brains aren't uh, wired to understand what's going to happen at the speed of light when time stops or mm. what happens in a black hole, in a singularity, mm. where technically time stops as well if it's infinite gravity. So very, very, liter very little is understood about mm. what happens when the laws of physics break down and they don't marry with the quantum, mm. our understanding of quantum physics. Which, by the way, also time is weird in the quantum realm. When you think of just particles and how they interact with each other mm. and like superposition where one particle can be here and another particle can be at the other end of the universe and you do something with the particle here, it instantly, the one at the other end of the in universe instantly responds. So there is no time between them. Mm. So they're c connected somehow. Yeah. yeah, they're connected in another way. So which is why it's not really called time, it's called space-time. So space and time are a function of each other. Mm. Time alone doesn't exist. Mm. Can't separate, yeah, yeah. You can't separate time from space. Mm. So time is, is motion. It's the motion of things. It's the tendency towards <laughs> entropy and, and maximum entropy. And to us, what matters to us is our own understanding of time. Mm. which is more in the realm of the absolute because it just makes things so much easier for us. Yeah. Why are we going to worry about the relative nature? Why do we need to worry <clears throat> about what happens at the speed of light right now? Other than curiosity. Yeah. Is there a reason? Yeah, it's purely intellectual curiosity. Yeah. At that level, like the, what does it solve for us? We're, we're more concerned with about how we use our time. Yeah. We're more concerned about how we can speed up or slow down time uh, the you know the fleeting moments yeah and then how we look back on our time right yeah uh, and and, and I, I guess sort of you know the, our point is mainly around that the perception is the one that because it's elastic you have so much room to play with that and you know how how we perceive it yeah um, there's a I wanted to talk about this a little bit briefly there's a book called the time paradox and it's by Philip Zabardo and essentially what he's done over you know a number of years his studies they've they've shown that we see the world in time perspectives and they've they've come up with six distinct time perspectives and those six are across past present and future okay and uh, so past present future six so there's two within each so you have in the past you have past positive and past negative in the present you have present hedonistic and uh, present fatalistic and in the future, you have a normal future, just future, and then you have future transcendental. And in, in the book, The Time Paradox, he introduces these time perspectives, talks about them. And I, I didn't entirely complete the book, and I don't want to ruin, you know, sort of the key takeaway, which is he proposes a, a good balance between these time perspectives based on what he saw. And I'll, I'll leave that, you know, for the people that are curious and they want to read the book to see what, what he's really suggesting. So what is... What is the present? So describe the two. What does he talk about in terms of the present? Did you say hedonistic and uh, fatalistic? So, so the, the past, I think, is very intuitive, right? Past positive, past negative. How do you look at the past, yeah. right? And, and it's, it's shown, like studies have shown that, for example, when you're younger, you tend to focus more on the negative memories, Yeah. right? As you get older, your, your positive memories are the ones that kind of like drive you and push you. Because I guess, again, when you're younger, the negative memory teaches you more. Yeah, you know it's more it's helpful in, in life and growing. I don't know up. if everyone would agree with you. No, no, it, it's not definitely a rule, but again, generally and on average, you know, young versus old, the young we have a negativity bias. Definitely right, and and as you grow older, you want to look back on your life positively as well. Yeah, to in, be in more, sense. to be more happy as a human. Yeah, yeah to feel you like your life to. has been fulfilled so and you've your, lived your well. past, the time that you've spent. Yeah. You spent it well. You spent it, absolutely. Okay, what about the present? The present, so the present is hedonism, which is, again, pleasure-seeking. Chasing pleasures. Very, you know, uh, easily easy to understand. The fatalistic is sort of like you're not in control of your, your present. You're not in control of your life. 
that uh, oh well this was going to happen anyway that's yeah. kind of that narrative determinism yeah yeah that kind of that narrative or destiny that oh this was always going to happen meant and to be things like that it's the, written it's written and and i can't change it i can't affect it right yeah. you don't have like agency yeah and the future so there's the typical future that you know you you think about the future well you're you're smart with your investments you plan your days and so on the transcendental future which is the final one is where you see as like death is just the beginning is that your 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 life you know you're 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 always in pursuit of something beyond just your life a bigger cause and things like that and this kind of might tie into the cyclical nature of you know time that other cultures are looked at right yeah that they see you know time as cyclical rather than linear right yeah um so it's it's quite fascinating you know his premise yeah there are some cultures that view time as being cyclical rather than just an arrow that goes from mm. beginning to an end it just keeps repeating and we yeah. actually don't know like our universe yeah. we don't know if it's gonna is it a cycle that's the thing right or because is it so right now, on. the way it's trending mm. is towards maximum entropy, not towards... Like, how does it repeat, right? How did it start? Because our it's linear for us from, I think, a physics point of view and from an Abrahamic religion point of view. Yeah. Because you think of the beginning and the end. Yeah, so... And, and, Alpha and, and the omega, right? Yeah, and the religious point of view is God said, let there be light, and there yes. was light. In the physical point of view, it's the Big Bang. Yeah. That's when time started yeah. for us, technically. Yeah, yeah. Every all our perception of time is towards the beginning of the universe. That's when it started. The universe is thirteen point eight billion years mm. old, or yeah. something like that, uh, give or take a couple of billion, I guess. Yeah, which is which is nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, hard to. Yeah, how how do you come to terms it, with that? The cyclical nature, if if it is. Yeah, does it repeat? Yeah. Mm. Is everything going to, is there going to be another big bang or mm. how, how, how does it work? Yeah. And we don't know, but really what we don't. do know for sure is that time is relative from a physical perspective. Like it kind of is the way we view time kind of is an illusion. Mm. The absolutist way of viewing time, which is the human way. That's not how time works. And there is mm -hmm. no such thing as time by itself. Yeah. Time is a function of space, space time. Very weird. Yeah. Space-time continuum? Yeah. Do you, you know where that's from? Well, that's the thing. That's the space-time continuum. I know, continuum. but there's a, you know, there's a joke about it. Uh, space-time continuum. Where is in, that from? In, in the movie. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about it after. Okay. It's, it's just like, it's a running joke throughout that film. Um, What's the film? Uh, Dude, Where's My Car? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I can't remember that movie. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, you know, like they're poking fun at, at, at that view. Yeah. Um, so... It, came to mind <laughs> uh, yeah i mean yeah we have to we have to joke about it as well because it's just so hard to understand but that's the thing right, right? like we, if we take it too serious i mean you could you know you go crazy with yeah this you, you get into ex existential yeah. crisis of like what does it even mean yeah and and when you talk about the duration of you know the universe and earth in billions and billions deep time deep time and I, I don't know if we have time for that but you know, it, it becomes back to, there's this theory of like co of cosmic insignificance. We are, yeah. Right? Yeah, that, we're... That like you're one life, two life, a million lives, the entire humanity of, you know, existence is, what did it do? What yeah, did so it really if you compress the age of the earth into a 24 hour <clears throat> day, <clears throat> so if you compress the 4.2 or 3 billion years into a 24 hour day, the existence of human beings in that 24 hour day <clears throat> is just shy of two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes of a 24 hour day of mm. the earth's existence. So we, for, we've that's, really- That's nothing. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. nothing. And the earth that's is like than, a lot younger than the universe okay. as well. Like there's 10 or so billion years mm. after the universe was born that the earth was. Okay. Cosmic insignificance. Yeah. 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 I think this is where we should wrap up, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's a good end yeah, to yeah. <clears throat> where we're going. Yeah, but I mean, we talked a lot about the concept of time. It was very abstract. So the takeaways are just abstract mm. things that you could mm. probably read more about if you want to. Mm. The one interesting one is that around the aspect of time is probably time management because that's what we can maybe make it more practical. Yeah, that, that would be yeah. a topic for another episode <clears throat> yeah. where we dive into time management and stuff. Yeah, like thinking about your time and, and how you use it playing around with the psychological nature in a way that can benefit you. Yeah. And, and the perspective, at least from that book, uh, The Time Paradox, 
can help you perhaps you want to feel like you know your your time was well spent and you're in control of it and you're in control and when you look back you go like okay did i really enjoy because yeah. you, you don't really the moments you lose the moments right you yeah, only that have part's the memories. really important yeah but most of the dive that we did was more into the mystical the mystical and the, the and the uh, really weird hard to understand mind bending concept yeah but it was a really good chat thanks yeah. sammy yeah thank you Tare. good stuff